All right, so you ready to start this or what? Hold start, on. start what? Hold on. We want to talk about raising healthy digital citizens, and that is a huge topic, but we're going to try to move through it fast. First of all, put the screens away when you're talking to people. <laughs> what am I communicating to you if I've, I've got my phone in my hand? So. That I am not the most important person at the table. Well, but, I mean, but, I, but I'm waiting for a, you know, a very important notification because someone might like my picture on Instagram or something like that. Right, okay, so what about if I what if I just set it down on the table? What is that much better? Not really, because you're actually probably paying more attention to it now because it's not <laughs> is it obvious. Gonna, is it gonna is it gonna do anything? We're signaling. I, I've got a whole other world going on, and you're welcome to come into it. But I got to keep this going on. Mm -hmm. And wow, if we're raising kids that way, where they don't think they're the most important person there, we just gotta chuck it. Let's chuck that screen sometimes because it's it's really bad. Technology addiction is real and they're talking more and it's more about real. it. And I think we need to be really smart about that as as parents and, and leaders of kids. You know, children under 13 just don't have the hardware upstairs to deal with social media. So what are your thoughts on that? For a 12 year old, for example, even at that age, it's really hard for them to fully understand the the gravity and the consequences of their actions on the internet. And social media addiction is, is a real thing these days mm -hmm. too. They say that the dopamine that, that fires off in your head that you would normally get from a nice meal together or hanging out with people happens when those pings yeah. go off on your phone. You get a notification and something happens in your brain and, and we're starting to train young people's brains to mm -hmm. respond to digital mm -hmm. notifications, little noises or little buzzes instead of the people around them. There's a, actually a statistic that the average teenager spends about nine hours on social media a day. Not their kids, though, because their kids are special. Uh. They don't do that. They don't. Yeah, no, it's, it's, really, it's really true. But if you let kids be kids and do the things that kids do, they'll be healthy adults when it comes time to be adults. Like I said, I've got six kids, ages 12 to 19. I'm in that. But what are some pro tips they can use to try to help with this social media and technology addiction that's yeah. happening. A big thing is just uh, setting limits and being healthy about it. It's not that you completely remove the opportunity for screens. And sometimes when you do, they might act like they're dying. They're not. <laughs> Will it kill them? Um, no, it won't kill them. <laughs> Their lives are orienting around this, this screen world. And it, kids these days are multitasking sometimes around five different screens yeah. at a time all that media impulse. No wonder we're anxious and we can't manage all the stresses of, of life because we've just got so much input going on. But they need good modeling from you, the parent. So they need to see you, that you aren't addicted to a screen, that you can live a normal, healthy human life without the screen. We need to step up as adults, show that there can yeah. be life outside of the screen. Um, also use a filtering service like Disney's Circle or Microsoft's Family Safety. Um, or any of the web apps to try to try to help just dial back some of the things that they're exposed to. Some sources say that the average age of exposure to pornography um, in the U.S. right now is age 11. Even if we're not talking about pornography or sexting or some of these really difficult things, their brains are developing in a digital space. We need to give them a break from that. So good boundaries can help with that. Number three, check out some parenting resources. There's this new book called Marching Off the Map. And this book gives peace to parents. You're the first generation whose children don't need you for information. Now, they do need you for interpretation. What are the ethics involved? How do we interpret the data? So I suggest that book. I'll link to it. Um, we hope that this helps you love and lead your kids well. Yeah, this has been Aaron and Andy in the hut. If you can think of a way we can help you love and lead your kids better, just let us know. Check us out on social. Subscribe to the channel. Check us out on the web. I think that's it. We're out. We're out.